Hi friends, it's Tracy from the Financial Freedom Diary and today we are back to create a financial goals or just a random task list. Um, you guys said you wanted to see this so I'm going to show you this today. Um, I have my current one showing on the screen right now but I'm going to switch over to sheet six to just create one with you and so we can walk through this together. Um, if I had to give advice up front I think that it would be easier if you wrote down or did like a rough draft of what your goals are on paper that kind of helps you understand your groupings that you may want in your spreadsheet i could see myself wanting to use something like this in my day-to-day -day job because you know as a project manager i have certain things going on and it all fit in certain headings so it may be business requirements and i have to set up so many meetings for design sessions while i try to accumulate what they want um Another thing could be development. I need to transfer what I have to the developer and we're going through certain scenarios. The next thing may be testing. And you know, there's so many things that I could create these subcategories that you see that I put on the side here to help me logically think through what is the grouping for this particular task? Where does this belong? Um, and so that's all I did on my sheet. But yeah, having that written down helps a whole lot and if i haven't asked if you're not subscribed to my channel please subscribe all right so let's hop right on over to sheet number six um the first thing i am going to do i always like to leave room for my header i never know up front like what what's going to be up there so i don't try to merge anything right up front i try to save all that formatting stuff for the very very end um, I also like to leave A <laughs> empty. Um, a lot of times I don't know what's going to go there and I'm just going to play it by ear. So for me and in this situation, I knew that I wanted something that talked about my debt. A little check off of that. And then I knew I wanted something that was going to talk about my savings for the future. Um, so I knew those two, but I never knew where it was going to fit in with all the headings and stuff like that. So I'm just going to skip down four and type in savings if I can spell. Yep, see, spelling. Um, and get those two in. The savings, I'm not going to do all the savings that was on my original sheet. I'm going to do like about five of those. And so I'm going to skip down about six lines. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then put in retirement. Okay, now over here in column B, that's where I the check marks are going to go. And so I'm not going to put a header for that. So I'm going to tab over one more. And this is where I put date completed. Um, you want to make the columns something that means something to you. Uh, date completed because I like to know when I've done something. I like to know... <laughs> I like to know when I actually did something and when I projected that I was going to do something. I think it's too many years working with engineers. I kind of think like that now. So I'm going to control C and put that in control V. And then control V next to across from the retirement, the row for the retirement. So that was row six for savings and row 13 for the retirement you're going to see that i'm skipping out the the sinking funds um because those that's something sinking funds is something that i would change yearly i could possibly change it every six months or so as need arises once i see what is actually coming down the pipe for me um the next thing i wanted was something that said what was my goal so that's the header is the goal and for debt is the amount owed at the point that I'm creating the spreadsheet. So whenever I'm creating something, it's as of that date. Um, when I'm gonna copy these two, Control C, Control V, and Control V. Probably shouldn't have done that, but um, I can go back and change that to my savings. It's amount to save. 
and retirement would be amount to save. I could have controlled C and V that too. So to save there. So now I got those and anything else that you want to put out here, you may want notes. So as you knock something off, there's something you want to remember. Um, you could add like in column F, you can add like notes or something if that's what you want. Um, it's all up to you. So the next thing I'm going to do is put in my goals. So pay off, set loan. What's the name of that loan? Oh, <laughs> 18 by June 2021. And I'm going to take that and just copy that one down because it's three student loans that I have left. And it's just easier for me to go in here and just fix everything. So that's, this one is going to be S13. And the goal for S13 is going to be by August 2021. And you'll see that because it was a date, um, Google Sheets changed the year because it thinks that's what I want, but not this time. But there are times when it, it may take you a year and that iteration works for you. So the next one is the payoff. This one's going to be T20. So let me go and change the loan name and number. And you could type this in without copying. I'm lazy. <laughs> uh, I want convenience all the time. December, not December, December. Um, and there. And then you can double click in here once that arrow you get an arrow pointing this way. So it'll expand the column to the width of the longest phrase that you use. So now I'm gonna go down into the savings and I'm gonna type in, um, say one month of expenses. Then save three months of expenses. Save six months of expenses and then i'm just going to skip to the down payment for a home and then our replacement Because I'm predicting that between me saving up the expenses, the six month of expenses and saving up for a home, I'm going to need to replace my car in between there. So I need to have money going to that so I can do that successfully and not have to worry about going back into debt. I'm going to um, do the six month of expenses as quickly as possible. Anything above that is good to have like a year or so, but um I'm not going to put it in this one because I don't want to draw this out for you guys because this is going to take me a minute. Now, you see I got that extra row there. I am going to right click on that and I'm going to delete that row. Now for my retirement, I'm just going to put two of my retirement goals here. And the first one is to raise my 401k. A contribution to max um, for match. I just realized something. Um, and then contribute fifteen percent of income. To retirement. And so this is where I'm going to do like the IRA and all that stuff like that. So I'm going to expand this a little bit more. So that way my goals are now all on one sheet. And I can see all of them. Nothing's hidden. Nothing funky going on. 
I'm going to do something with this header because I technically don't really need that. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that because my 401k and my contributions to my retirement, um, I don't want to think of it as a maximum amount that I'm going to put in there um, because it's going to be lots of stuff. <laughs> and I, I'm older than a lot of you guys, so I need to be as aggressive as possible when it comes to that. So the next thing I want to do is I want to insert the check boxes and Google makes this real easy. I went and looked at this in Excel. Excel is a little bit, um, it's a lot more steps. Google has made this super easy to do. And so all I did was copy that down. And so I'm going to control C and then skip down and then control V. And you'll see that I'm not um, doing a lot of formatting or anything like that. I'm going to come back and do that last C, then control C again, and then control V. And I hope I'm doing good for time. Um, now that I got this checkbox, the thing is to understand with checkboxes, what is their state? They're either either active or inactive, right? So they're you know either off or on. So for Google Sheets, what is the state for their checkboxes? So when it's not checked, you'll see up here in this uh, formula where you can see what's in the cell, it says false. But when I click it, it says true. So what I want over here in the date completed is I want it to automatically do something if the value in B3 which is where this first check box is, if it's true. For me, I wanted it to tell me the date. And so there is a function out there. So it's equals if. And so you see it says returns value depending on logical expression. So that is if B3 equals true. That's your logical expression then what so hopefully that makes sense so we're gonna if open parentheses and then we're gonna do b3 and you can do this with uppercase b or lowercase b b3 equals true and you can put this in all uppercase letters or in mixed case like what i'm doing or in all lowercase letters whichever is um works for you. Now look at the example here. You see the logical expression, which is what we have. B3 equals true. And see the uh, punctuation. You need to put a comma behind that. Now, if the value is true, what do you want it to do? I want it to return a date. So I'm going to use now. And you have to put now and then open and close parentheses. And so that's what's going to return if the value is true. So that's the good thing about Google Sheets is it's taking you along with that formula and now just returns the current date timestamp. And then I'm going to put a comma because there's a punctuation there. Now, what do I want to do if it's false? Well, I just want to see empty cell. And so I'm going to do a open and close double quotation marks. And then now I'm done. So that's the false part. And now I need to close out with the closing parentheses. I have to do that to close it out. If I don't do that, it's going to throw an error. All right. Now here's where I'm going to mess with the format. So you see now it's saying 515, 1250, <laughs> and 41 seconds. That's the exact time it is right now for me. I don't want it to say all of that. Now, you may. You may. That's a personal preference. But for me, I don't want all that. I just want a date. Um, so I'm going to go down to the number. And you see how that box is dropped down. I want it to give me a date instead of a date timestamp. And so here you see how it has date time. That's what it actually returned. I can ask for the time if I'm interested in that. Or I can just ask for the date, which is what I want. It's just the date. 
and voila, there it is. And now you can take that. You see there's like a dark blue box right in here at the very corner. You want to click on that and drag it down. And so you don't see the dates in these cells. And you may be like, well, I don't trust that it did it right. <laughs> so just click and then click. And so that way it'll tell you if it's actually done the way you want. Now, the next thing to do is type, copy this. So control C and copy that through your other cells where you have a, um, a checkbox. Control V. And so I'm just going to drag it down here. Double check and see if it's working. And then uncheck. Because I see that it is. Now I'm going to go to this last one. Control C. And then Control V. And then I'm going to drag that down. Just one more. Double check. Make sure I'm working. And then uncheck because I know that I am. Now, conditional formatting. Here's the fun part. Now, one of the things I didn't do that I am going to do now, I'm just going to put some numbers here um, because I actually wrote them down from the other sheet. So y'all stop judging me. <laughs> I'm trying to save some time because y'all don't want a 40 minute video. Uh, 5129 is what I owe. 7900. Uh, 14 7. Yeah, and I got the, the two finger data entry now. <laughs> um, one month of expenses, I'm estimating 3000 I wish it was 300 Uh Three months, I want, instead of 900 I want an even 10000 I'm rubbing off on me. And then six months, 20000 Their down payment for my house, I actually put down 70000 I'm gonna be an apartment dwelling for a while. Uh, a car. Ooh, I had wrote like 15 or something like that. Shh. A used car is about like 25,000. That's got cut. Oh, Ooh, I almost cussed, but I didn't. All right, so I'm gonna highlight these three. And I want these to be in currency. So I'm just gonna click on this dollar sign for those. And I'm gonna do the same for my savings. But yeah, I haven't bought a car. I forgot when I bought, got my car. Was it 2017? Yeah, it was 2017. So yeah, I was like sticker shock. God, oh, why these cars cost so much? <laughs> and they're used. But they're like, cars are getting like super, super expensive. Everything's getting super expensive if we're honest, right? Okay, so I got that formatted. Focus, Tracy. Okay, I had to jump off of here. And so I'm going to close this window out so that way you guys can see how I got there. But um, I didn't know where I left off before I had to answer the phone. But we're going to create conditional formatting, set off the same principle of if this is true. So if this is checked, we want it to do something. So what I wanted it to do was to strike through the actual goal and the amount owed, just so it will reflect to me that it's done. Um, so we're gonna go to format and then conditional formatting. And now I did not want that here. So what I'm gonna do is in this upper section here on the right hand side, in the conditional format rules, I'm gonna to apply to a range. So I wanted to apply to not B3, which is where I clicked. I want it over here. And I'm going to select all the way down to E5. So I'm highlighting all of that. Um, I got to get that off of there. And for right now, I'm going to click OK. So you see how they took that little funky green off? That mint green is what Google defaults to when you're setting up a condition. So here I'm going to go down to custom formula is. And so I want to put in my formula. Um, you can create a static value, but I want it to if B3 
equals true strike through and take off that funky mint green i don't want that so i'm gonna do equals and then dollar sign v3 equals true and now you can see how these right here that mint green kind of left that because their sales which would be like b4 or b5 aren't um so i don't want it to shift columns or anything so that's why i put that dollar sign in there um, i'm not sure if that's needed or not it's just something that i do from excel so i don't want any funky coloring but i do want it to strike through and so you see how it's striking through column D and column E because it's all within this range. And so I'm going to say that I'm done, right? But technically I'm not. I just want to test it out. So I'm going to deselect and you see it's gone. I'm going to select and now you see the strike through is back. And I'm selecting that. You see the strike through, select that and the strike through appears. Now you're probably wondering where did your formula go? If I want to see that again, I want to highlight these. And so now you see the conditional format that I put here based on that rule. Now I want to add my savings section and my retirement section. So what I'm going to do is go up in here. I'm going to select this data range. I'm not going to change this first range and I'm trying to find a place to put this. So that you guys can see i'm going to add another range and then i'm going to highlight d7 all the way down to e11 so i want to make sure i have these two highlighted now i have a little bit more so i'm going to add another range and i'm going to highlight those two and now i'm going to click ok and now I want to click done because I want to make sure all of these work. So I'm going to select them as I go along to see if it works. So, woohoo! <laughs> and now I'm going to exit out of that and then I'm going to deselect these. So let's say you've already done one section and you've gone on to go cook or you know you're working or something like that and you want to see how to bring that rule back up so you can look or make a modification or something like that just highlight the sales that you put the conditional formatting on go back to format and then down to conditional format and it'll show it to you right there then you can click on that and then you can make edits to that. Uh, one of the things I think I said that, you know, you could do strike throughs or you can change the color. Because you remember I had that funky green on there. You can also do black. And that's weird to me, but I've seen people do that. Well, you don't even see the gold at all. Because the font color and the field color are the same. So it looks like nothing is actually there. But there's actually words in there. So you can see that here but yeah i don't want that <laughs> just want to show you some stuff i've seen people do like in excel and stuff so let me get this right back to where i had it because i done messed up the thing and i don't want it we don't want it <laughs> i just wanted to be a strike through but that's the way to go back and see that and so now we got all that done so let's move on and we're going to close out of the conditional format rules because now we know that it works and we are going to go in and we can put in a header so i just select the first cell drag my mouse all the way across to e because now i know how wide it actually is and now i am going to merge the sales and i am going to make this 18 font and i am going to type i just grabbed my notebook the goals or task list or whatever whatever floats your boat and now that is a left justified i want it to be center so i clicked on this paragraph here and i'm gonna move that to the center and 
now I like color um, and I believe I went with a blue I went through my blues and then my font for that cell I picked white did I pick did I pick the white sometimes I think I'm doing something and I'm actually not and then I want to make it bold and you can change from the defaults and stuff if you want to um, I think I had a darker blue than this blue. Yeah. And here, I can do the same thing as far as the blue is concerned, but I want to fix this right here. So I'm going to take this, drag it all the way down, so that way it visually tells me what is the debt. And I want to do a merge. Then I want to center it. And then I want to change the direction of the text. And so this text rotation here. And then you pick which way you want it to look. Like I've seen some like this. I normally use something like that when I'm doing like um, a racy matrix. When I'm saying, okay, who this is who's responsible, who's accountable who's consulted, who's informed, so everybody knows what they're supposed to be doing. And you don't have anybody saying, well, was it my job? <laughs> it's like, now we all know whose job it is. Um, and so I'm gonna do the same for savings. So we're gonna merge. And then we are going to center. And then we are going to rotate up. You can change it down or whichever way you want. Um, retirement, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna do a merge. We're gonna do a center. And then we're gonna rotate up. And you see how that is not enough space for retirement. So I'm going to make these cells a little bit bigger. Or make the rows a little bit bigger. So that way I can see the word retirement. And now I'm gonna double click on A. When I get that arrow pointing to the right, okay, it just busted all the way <laughs> bigger than what I wanted, but really I want it thinner. Google Sheets, what are you? I was probably looking at the financial goals and trying to make it as big as that. But I don't want that. So, I want to lift this. Hmm. I'm going to play with this because I wanted to lift it up. That's to the top. Now it's to the center. Let's do this. I have to re, I think it has to recalibrate what the center is. But retirement looks okay. But I'll click that just in case. So now, let me make these blue. Which blue did I check? And let's change the text color to white. And let's make this a bold. There. And make sure the blues all match here. And so I'm gonna go across here and do the same. I'm gonna make that blue. Make my text white and make my text bold. And I want them all centered. There. That looks better to me. And we're going to repeat again blue, white text, bold, center. There, you can see that amount save is right up against the edge. It's driving me nuts, y'all. So I'm going to move this out just a little bit. So it gives it a little bit more room. And go down here to the retirement. I'm going to stop this right here for retirement. I'm going to just get it right to the end of the goal. And then I'm going to make that blue. Make my text white. 
and then I am going to center and then I forgot to make it bold so I'm going to do that now we these right here these three cells right here I'm going to merge them into one and then I'm gonna make it blue Cause I'm not going to set any maximum amounts there. So nothing needs to go there, but I also don't want it to be white. I just wanted to represent that nothing's going to go there. And so I don't even think in the future to come back and do that. Now, the next thing that you'll see, y'all know, I like to highlight and I'm always kind of like conflicted on <laughs> the order of the borders. I like to have, I like to see my borders. So I'm going to highlight everything. And I started with B2, but not the outer shell. And so I play around with this until I get it the way I want it. Okay, so that's black. That's good. And the first ones, just for a normal, I just want to see a regular border for everything and see how that comes out. And then I just like to look at that and say, okay, because this might be good enough for somebody right here. I like um, an outer shell. So I'm selecting everything. And then I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna increase my line thickness to the third one down. And I want this outer borders selected there now one thing i can't see with the debt the savings i can't see it showing me those um i am going to go back to the borders i'm going to pick i should have done this one second line two but i can go back and fix it and select our borders Do that again and one more time and so that's going to use that slightly thicker line than what's in here but i do need to go back and fix the outer shell again so that's why i said it should have been done second <laughs> instead of when i did it um but i'm just going to go back here increase my line back to three and then select that again and there that looks good for me. And I can say this section right here is my debt. This section right here is my savings. And this section down here is my retirement because I can see the beginning and end of it. And if I want to print, how would it look? And so it would look good even if it was printed. So that's one of the things that I like to see if, it's, if I can print because sometimes I do keep hard copies of things and I do things manually that helps me from like a memorization thing but this right here just kind of helps takes everything off my head it's now on paper I cannot not paper but it's now in something that I can get back to so when I get ready to put things on paper I got a shell to work from so that's what that does for me so hopefully this helps you um, if there's anything else I need to explain let me know sorry about the interruption fortunately I'm on call so I don't know when they're going to call me, but um, hopefully this helps. And let me know if you need anything. But you guys have a super fantastic Monday. Because, yeah, this is going to go up on Monday. And I will talk to you all later. If you haven't had a chance to subscribe, please subscribe. Like the video. And we'll talk on Tuesday for a pay debt with me. Bye.